Hey friends, you're watching Metal Trails and today we're here at the Freilichtbühne in the Stadtpark in Hamburg and we're talking with Dead Can Dance. Would you please introduce yourself to our audience? My name is Lisa Gerard. My name is Humphrey Bogart. If you don't know me by now, fuck you. You're on tour right now, how's it going? The tour's been going very well, yes, it's been wonderful. You know, and we're playing quite a few outdoor concerts now, which is different for us because we usually have, you know, darkness in the theatre and it's a lot closer and more intimate. But it's been interesting. It's been fun. Yes. It's been great. Did anything special or especially memorable happen so far? Um, well, it's always wonderful when you're doing the concerts, you know, because it's a moment for us to be able to reconnect with our audience and things. This tour really was an extension of our other tour because we sold some tickets out very quickly on the last tour and a lot of people missed out. So the idea was that we would continue um, with this work of, um, of you know, really letting people know about Anastasis, the new album. Uh, you know, really to sort of allow for people that didn't make it to come this time. Yeah, so it's been really interesting sort of coming back again. And it's always really nice to travel in the summer as well, you know, because there's less sort of fear of getting flus and stuff like that. That's always a bit of a stress. We also missed out, missed geographically, we missed a lot of places out on the last tour. So we're kind of returning to different countries, and um, also we, we, we're under, yeah, like you were saying, undersubscribed. They sold out very quickly. A lot of the major cities. Is it sometimes hard for you to stay away from your friends and family for such a long time? It's something. It comes with the work, you know, and we've become more familiar with it. It was much more difficult when the children were small. Now they have their own lives, and it's kind of, you know, they don't need you there all the time. So it's it, it is easier. But um, I think the thing that happens with us on tour is that we have a sort of little family within the band, so we're able emotionally to sort of find a bit of a sanctuary within that. But there is definitely time uh, spent apart, but that's, that's, part of, that's part of the thing that as an artist or as a musician or a composer or whatever, you have to be willing to take your work out into the world. Yeah, yeah, I miss them terribly. Your musical style is mostly categorized as world music. Would you agree on that? And what's uh, the intention behind this genre term? Well, as you call it a genre term, yes. And it's something that these things have been created by marketing people or, you know, it's just been sort of kind of a, a sort of slipshot way of, you know, getting things into categories. It's arrogant. It's first world yeah. fucking bullshit. You know. To just put the rest of the world outnumber the Western music market mm. into one little bin. No. No. We, we, we've never no. abided by that, that term, musical term. No. It's insulting. Yeah. And there's so much, so much diversity to the music. I prefer when people say, you know, what sort of music do you make? And I say, well, we make the music that we love making, you know, and that can be lots of different influences or, you know, it's not really that easy to realize. But anything that I've heard that I thought was sort of a close way of kind of coming to some of the work, not all of it, but was um, a romantic kind of neo-baroque with Asiatic kind of colors and influences. And I thought, well, that, that feels sort of close to some of the work, but then there's other pieces that don't fall into that category too. So it's really, you have to listen to it, you see, to really know what it's all about. No, we're, we're, no one makes music like us. We're, we're, we're unique. We, um Even though it comes from you know many different sort of like uh, musical traditions, you know we we hold our hands up and we admit and we'll tell people where those influences come from if they're not aware you know aware of those musics themselves. It, we have such broad and wide tastes that that we don't limit ourselves to one particular genre, mm -hmm. and we've always been open to that. But we've always distilled that and filtered it into something which is our own kind of stylistic genre, which which uh, people have copied, but, but it's, um, it's something unique to ourselves. You know, no one makes music like us. Mm. Nowadays, a lot of people are talking about the authenticity of music, uh, something like the true metal or false music. Yeah. Do you think there is false or true music? I worry about seeing people that, like, still, you know, in their, in their 50s, um, like Sabbath fans, still long hair, still 
they they haven't moved on, you know. And it's like I I I see this music as something which is very male orientated, and something that pubescent males go through, mm. from like you know from teens, you know, basically. But it's 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 all a little bit sad. Um, having said that, I I really like um, a lot of heavy metal music. You know, but um, I think this whole genre thing is too fashion orientated, and all these new di different types. I mean, but it's basically the same thing. You know, it's just like, you know, it's it's young men wanting to have a lot like a kind of pagan kind of identity, and all this bullshit going on. Like you know, but it's like some one weird tribe, and I, I think um, we're more about sort of like. Um, uh, trying to get people to be themselves and recognize their own individuality you know and 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 be able to offer something to the world through finding their own voice and their their own persona yes. you know and we're very um, anti movements or genres in that respect you know mm. and that's very apparent in in the lyricism especially um and also in a, in our collective you know um uh, what we choose collectively, you know, we we want, we're about breaking down walls about genres, mm. saying that it's, you can mix this kind of music with this kind of music. You can take it from there and there. It's all valid, you know. Mm. Someone said something to me the other day, and I I found it deeply touching. Um, they came up to me after the concert. It was a, a friend of mine's son, actually, and he said, "I was moved." By the work, I felt something very deep shift inside me when I heard the work, and I thought that's the greatest compliment, really, because that's the work moves us, and you know we have to open ourselves to being able to express that wonderful connection and and the passion that is still very much alive in us when we are influenced and inspired by music. And when another person responds in that way, to me, that's that's what it's all about. That's why, because it's it's something deeper than you know our everyday sort of mediocre existence, where there's the onslaught of you know of ignorance, and you know, um, and then in that moment we can have that lovely personal cathartic connection with something that you know somebody else has put a lot of effort and love into sharing with us. You know, it makes it very makes it special and, and I, I think that's what's provoked us to continue to work on over the years is the fact that when you talk about true you know that's the true I think that motivates us not a is it true or is it not true or but those are the things it's when something absolute crystallizes inside of you like someone saying I was moved well we were moved when we were making this work you understand so there's the connection would you say that music is only showing some kind of a status quo? Or can music move the people, change society or politics? I think it can be a vehicle for all those kind of things. But I feel, with the greatest respect, that you're slanting towards a very mainstream, kind of almost cynical, um, with, you know, excuse me, but a cynical attitude towards something that's very innocent and very pure. You know, I prefer to look at music as a campfire, a way of communicating the things of the spirit and the heart, not politics. Although it has been, you know, used as a vehicle. Yeah, I, I, um, I think it's perfectly valid to um, talk about anything you want to, really, in music. It's, it's um, expression, really, you know, it, it's the ultimate form of expression. I think it ties in your, your, your emotional, an emotional context with the word, you know, it makes it even more powerful. Yeah, um, uh, yeah I, I think, you know, there, there are political undertones in, in uh, what we do, but they're addressed to um, humanity as opposed to, you know, push, uh, pushing a particular program, regime, dogma, you know. Um, and um, yeah, m music can influence and has done. Um, 
we're often asked this question and it's like it amazes me why it's being asked because it's obvious that it does all those things that you, you mentioned. You know? mm. It can change things, um, chanting, slogans, propaganda, you know, uh, media, they use music all the time. You know, it's, um, it's often done subliminally, you know, without us even realizing that we're being manipulated. Mm. You know? Music's a very important way of getting deep into the heart of emotion and making people feel nostalgic. Mm. Nostalgia can be, can be used to make people think that it used to be much better before than it was now. Mm. You know, especially in terms of, of um, this kind of current trend against immigration. Um, and it's this rising of, of uh, right-wing fascism that is coming. It's definitely coming. You can see that and it will be on the back of this recession. It's on the back of most recessions, anyway, this right-wing conservatism. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I think these are dangerous times mm -hmm. ahead for all people in Europe, anyway. If you were referring to our music, where was the question about what we were doing, or were you speaking about music well, in general? Well, it's a question about music in general, that's too, right? Oh, music in general, right, I see. Because I think we're very, Brendan and I are very careful that our music doesn't get used for fascist, you know, um, campaigns or political campaigns and stuff like that. We're very careful. You know, I mean, I had to get a friend of a person that I work with, Hans Zimmer. We found that some of the work that we'd done for Gladiator was being used on a site um, inappropriately. And, and you really have to, you really do have to stop that because it's association and that's not what the work is about. Yes, of course, you can use those things as political instruments, but that's not what provokes us to make music. In fact, quite the opposite, I think. I know that Brennan has very strong political views, on, and I don't. I'm more, much more interested in the story of the heart. But, you know, um, it's been interesting. Thanks for your time and for this interview. Would you mind saying a few final greetings for all the fans out there? Hi, my name is Lisa Gerard, and we just want to welcome you to Metal Trails. Um, welcome. <laughs>